Section 03, The Fire Sermon. Line No. 01 to 14. The river's tent is broken, the last fingers of leaf. Clutch and sink into the wet bank. The wind crosses the brown land, unheard. The nymphs are departed. Sweet Thames, run softly, till I end my song. The river bears no empty bottles, sandwich papers, silk handkerchiefs, cardboard boxes, cigarette ends, or other testimony of summer nights. The nymphs are departed, and their friends, the loitering heirs of city directors, departed, have left no addresses. By the waters of Lehman I sat down and wept. Sweet Thames, run softly till I end my song. Sweet Thames, run softly, for I speak not loud or long. But at my back in a cold blast I hear the rattle of the bones, and chuckle spread from ear to ear. Explanation one of the key themes of this stanza is the idea of fragmentation and decay. The metaphor of the river's tent being broken suggests that something once whole and complete has been destroyed, which is a recurring motif throughout the poem. This fragmentation is also reflected in the image of the leaves clutching and sinking into the wet bank, as well as the wind crossing the brown land unheard. These images create a sense of emptiness and desolation, as if something vital has been lost or destroyed. Another important theme in this stanza is the idea of loss and nostalgia. The mention of the departed nymphs and their friends, the heirs of city directors, creates a sense of longing for a lost world. The fact that they have left no addresses reinforces the sense of loss and disconnection. The reference to the waters of Lehman, a lake in Switzerland, also adds to this theme of nostalgia, as it evokes a sense of romanticism and longing for a past that is no longer accessible. The image of the river running softly at the end of the stanza can be interpreted in different ways. It may represent a desire for peace and tranquility, as well as a sense of hope that something beautiful and pure can still exist in the midst of chaos and destruction. Alternatively, it may be seen as a mournful recognition that the river, like everything else in the modern world, is subject to decay and impermanence. Finally, it is worth noting the use of language in this stanza. Eliot employs a range of literary techniques, including metaphor, allusion, and repetition, to create a dense and evocative atmosphere. The repetition of the phrase, the nymphs are departed, emphasizes the theme of loss and nostalgia, while the allusion to the biblical passage, by the waters of Lehman I sat down and wept, adds a layer of cultural and historical resonance. Overall, this stanza sets the tone for the rest of the poem and introduces some of its key themes and ideas. Next line is the contrast between the peaceful image of the Thames River and the sense of danger and foreboding that surrounds the speaker. The repetition of the phrase, Sweet Thames, run softly, emphasizes the speaker's desire for a peaceful and tranquil world, while the description of the cold blast and rattling bones creates a sense of threat and danger. This contrast between the peaceful and the ominous is a recurring motif throughout the poem, reflecting the fractured and uncertain nature of modern life. The use of sound and imagery in this stanza is also significant. The repetition of the phrase, Sweet Thames, run softly, creates a sense of rhythm and musicality, while the description of the rattling bones and chuckling laughter adds a layer of dissonance and discord. This use of sound and imagery creates a jarring and unsettling effect, reflecting the chaotic and uncertain nature of modern life. The final line of the stanza, and chuckle spread from ear to ear, is particularly notable. The use of the word, chuckle, creates a sense of malevolence and sadism, as if someone or something is taking pleasure in the speaker's fear and discomfort. This reinforces the sense of threat and danger that permeates the stanza, suggesting that the speaker is being pursued by something sinister and malevolent. Line number 15 to 26. A rat crept softly through the vegetation, dragging its slimy belly on the bank, while I was fishing in the dull canal, on a winter evening round behind the gas house. Musing upon the king my brother's wreck, and on the king my father's death before him, white bodies naked on the low damp ground, and bones cast in a little low dry garret, rattled by the rat's foot only, year to year. But at my back from time to time I hear the sound of horns and motors, which shall bring Sweeney to Mrs. Porter in the spring. Explanation. The opening lines of this section create a sense of unease and discomfort through the image of the rat. The use of the word, slimy, emphasizes the unpleasantness of the image and creates a sense of disgust. This image of the rat is juxtaposed with the speaker's fishing in the canal on a winter evening, which reinforces the sense of coldness, bleakness, and isolation. 
The following lines shift the focus to the speaker's thoughts, which are centered on the loss of family members, his father and brother. The imagery of, white bodies naked on the low damp ground, and, bones cast in a little low dry garret, is stark and haunting, evoking a sense of death and decay. This imagery emphasizes the sense of burden and weight that comes with familial legacy and the inevitability of death and decay. The use of repetition, King my brother's wreck, and, King my father's death before him, emphasizes the speaker's preoccupation with his family's history and the weight of their legacy. The repetition of the word, king, suggests a sense of grandeur and power, but the use of the word, wreck, emphasizes the sense of loss and decay that accompanies this legacy. The final two lines introduce the character of Sweeney and his impending arrival to meet Mrs. Porter in the spring. This sudden shift in focus creates a sense of disorientation and fragmentation, highlighting the disjointed nature of the poem as a whole. The use of the word, shall, in, which shall bring, creates a sense of inevitability, suggesting that even in the midst of chaos and fragmentation, there are certain events that are predetermined and inevitable. Line number 27 to 40. Oh the moon shone bright on Mrs. Porter. And on her daughter. They wash their feet in soda water. Et o sees voy d'enfants, chantant dans la couple. Twit twit twit. Jug 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 jug. So rudely forked. Teru. Unreal city. Under the brown fog of a winter noon. Mr. Eugenides, the Smyrna merchant. And shaven, with a pocket full of currants. C. I. F. London. Documents at sight. Asked me in demotic French. To luncheon at the Cannon Street Hotel. Followed by a weekend at the Metropole. Explanation. The opening lines describe Mrs. Porter and her daughter washing their feet in soda water under the bright moonlight. This image of cleanliness and domesticity is sharply contrasted with the chaotic and fragmented nature of the poem as a whole, highlighting the sense of disorientation and loss that pervades the work. The use of the French phrase, et o sees voy d'enfants, chantant dans la couple, adds to this sense of contrast, as it introduces an image of purity and innocence in the form of children singing in a dome. The use of the French language, which is not previously employed in the poem, creates a sense of dislocation and foreignness, emphasizing the sense of cultural and linguistic fragmentation. The repetition of sounds in, twit 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 jug 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 jug, creates a sense of discord and fragmentation, as these sounds do not form coherent words or phrases. This repetition of nonsensical sounds may be interpreted as a reflection of the fragmented and chaotic nature of modernity, and perhaps even as a commentary on the dehumanizing effects of modernity. The line, Teru, is a reference to a song sung by the lovers in Boccaccia's, Decameron, which tells the story of a man who dies of unrequited love. This reference may be interpreted as a commentary on the destructive nature of love and desire, as well as on the larger theme of death and decay that pervades the poem. The phrase, Unreal City, not only references Dante's, Inferno, but it also suggests a sense of unreality and disconnection from reality. This theme of disconnection from reality is further emphasized by the image of the, brown fog, which creates a sense of haziness and distortion. The city is therefore depicted as a place that is both unreal and unclear, which contributes to a sense of disorientation and confusion. The character of Mr. Eugenides is also significant, as he represents the type of person who is consumed by commercialism and the pursuit of wealth. The fact that he is a Smyrna merchant implies that he is involved in international trade, and his invitation to lunch and a weekend stay at hotels further emphasizes his wealth and status. This character can be seen as a symbol of the destructive effects of capitalism and commercialism on society. The use of demotic French is also significant, as it suggests a lack of cultural cohesion and unity in the city. The use of colloquial language emphasizes the sense of fragmentation and disconnection between people from different cultural backgrounds, and reinforces the theme of cultural dislocation.